with something as serious as the wielding of state power to kill somebody, there should be maximum transparency and not what's happening at the moment, which is maximum censorship. Though the death penalty remains legal in the majority of American states, only a handful of them actually carry out executions, numbering in the few dozens annually. Part of the reason the American public maintains a steadfast support of its government killing convicted murderers is due to the fact that our executions are cloaked in secrecy and largely sold to the public as a medical procedure, akin to putting a sick animal to sleep. But a series of botched executions in 2014 have exposed a problem largely unknown to the American public. The drugs currently used for lethal injections are experimental, untested, and proving to be ineffective of a killing prisoners without excruciating pain. Reason TV asked Ed Pilkington, chief reporter for The Guardian US, and Richard Dieter, the executive director of the Death Penalty Information Center, about the disparity between American support for the death penalty and the dearth of information available to the public regarding executions. Since the 70s, America has tried to sanitize the way it kills people in death chambers. You know, it's not driven by sympathy for the defendants who did terrible crimes. We don't want to hear gruesome facts about executions. We don't want to hear people squirming on the gurney and their children watching as they're being executed. And by using pharmaceutical drugs to, to do the killing, they're implying that this process is painless, it's humane, it's very civilized, and they've used that as a way of undermining resistance and opposition to the death penalty. But now we're seeing pharmaceutical companies, governments, the European Union, protest groups, all saying, hang on, this is wrong. Medical drugs are created in order to save lives, in order to make people's health better. They are not created to kill people. Faced with a European Union ban on selling drugs used in lethal injections, death penalty states now rely on compounding pharmacies, usually small businesses who will produce execution cocktails made to order. These drugs are unregulated by the FDA, and their manufacturers are cloaked in secrecy. Oklahoma is one of these states, and when Clayton Lockett was executed in April 2014, the procedure was anything but quick and painless. It took 43 minutes from the time the first needle was inserted in Lockett's arm for him to die. So he was groaning, he was shouting out, they were finding it impossible to get a vein, so blood was spurting all over the people in the death chamber. I mean, it was the most horrendous situation. And right at that moment, they decided to shut the curtain, which would prevent any witnesses, including reporters, from seeing what happened. So there you have, I think in most visceral form, the censorship that's going on. First off, you have censorship surrounding the drugs and where they came from, so that you can't do a public interest job as a journalist to check whether those drugs were sufficient standard to do a proper job. Then when everything goes wrong, you shut the curtain so we can't see what happens. And that's the kind of depths that these death penalty states are, are now succumbing to. With something as serious as the wielding of state power to kill somebody, there should be maximum transparency and not what's happening at the moment, which is maximum censorship. Missouri is one of 13 states which have expanded what are called Black Hood laws, meant to protect the identity of executioners, to now also make confidential the identities of everyone involved in the production and delivery of lethal injection drugs. These laws even supersede the Freedom of Information Act. In response, The Guardian, the Associated Press, and several prominent Missouri newspapers have filed suit against the state in what is believed to be the first lawsuit to challenge the death penalty on First Amendment grounds. There is a provision within the First Amendment that says the public, and we as journalists as part of the public, should have access to key elements of government operations. It's why the public is allowed into a courtroom. We think that it shouldn't just apply within the courtroom situation within a trial, it should apply to the end of the process in a capital case, which is when someone is executed in the death chamber. And everything to do with that execution process, the public should have First Amendment access to. Even anti-death penalty politicians, like Virginia's Governor Terry McAuliffe, are in support of increased secrecy regarding lethal injections because the alternative would be to bring back grislier forms of execution, like the firing squad, which Utah is considering, or even the gas chamber, which Missouri is contemplating. So states have all scrambled to block media, the public, even the courts, from knowing where these execution drugs come from. Theory is that these companies won't provide the drugs if their names are in the paper, because after all, they're not in the business of um, perfecting executions. Look, if you're building bridges, tell us where you get the, the bolts from. And if the bridge collapsed, we want to know who's responsible, professionals. You don't have to tell us the name of every riveter, but we got to know who caused this. And if you think about it, there cannot be anything as important as the state killing somebody. The more state power that is wielded, we believe the more transparency there should be. And, and what's actually happening in death penalty states is the opposite from that. They are giving less and less information to the public. 
No date has been set for the Missouri lawsuit. But in the meantime, death row inmates in several states have filed suit on the grounds that the drugs that they are to be killed with may violate their Eighth Amendment rights prohibiting cruel and unusual punishment. I think it goes back to the, a sort of squ a public squeamishness about what's being done. Going back to these methods that are very hard to describe as civilized or painless or humane, you know, firing squad or electric chair, which, you know, is anything but painless, or the gas chamber, which of course has ramifications of what happened in Germany in the, in the 40s, which is pretty chilling. But for me, that talks to, to the existence of the death penalty itself. I mean, if people aren't prepared to see what is being done in their name, then perhaps they shouldn't be doing it.